Right, and now we'll see if I can screen share. Hold on, before I screen share, hold on, let's stop that. So this this is the camera that we that we have. Uh, it's quite a sturdy beast. Uh, it was pretty high top of the range when we bought it, which is about 10 years ago. Uh, I'm gonna talk you through thermal imaging, but with a particular relevance to using this camera. Um, I haven't used the clip-on ones for a smartphone. Um, I'd be very interested to have a look at one of those and, and see how it relates in uh, what, what the difference is. But what I have found, the advantage of our flute camera is that it is, the, the images are very manipulable. Uh, whereas I've used other thermal imaging cameras where you've got what you've got and there's nothing really you can do with it. So, uh, so okay, so can we now see the, um, the slides? Anyone like to confirm you can see the slides? Yeah, yeah, that's, fine. The slides. that's fine. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Now I've just got to work out how. Right. Okay. So this is our first our first image. Um, anyone care to tell me what this is showing us? The, the uh, <laughs> gone, Loretta. Oh, sorry. Window frames seem to be losing heat the fastest. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the roof seems to be uh, reasonable with a with, with a patch that is is less good. Yes. Yeah. Um, anything about the walls? Yeah, there's some leaky bits of the walls. Yeah. There's one thing missing with this photograph, um, and really all thermal imaging should have it, and that's that's a. Um, a list of the temperatures down yeah. the left hand side. It should really yeah. be telling you what those what those temperatures mean and which which are the hottest and which are the coldest. I think uh, Loretta's right. Red is red is hot, um, uh, and then we go down to purple is the coldest. So we are seeing we are seeing some heat off the window frames. Uh, we have to be careful though because um, there's this thing called emissivity. Mm -hmm. um, and different materials uh, emit heat at different rates. So you have to watch out that something, um, if something is shiny, it will look as though it's hot when it isn't necessarily hot. Um, but it is interesting that the top of that window frame is considerably uh, hotter than the bottom. There may well be um, trickle vents. So there's some air coming out of those top the top of the window frame. It's not unusual for the window frame to be uh, the hottest place you can see. We can see the roof generally looks good, but it's very patchy around the um, around the hip here. Um, and there's another patch in the roof up there. We could also see there's some sort of brick panels here and, and it's slightly colder in the... Um, it's slightly warmer here on the brick piers. So it looks like they're reasonably, the actual brick panels are reasonably well insulated. So looks like there's some missing roof insulation on the hip and the ridge, cold bridging from brick piers. So the cavity appears to be filled. Any idea what this is showing us? This is the wildlife Life Trust building in Shrewsbury, by the way, if any of you are familiar with it. This is a doorway here. Mm. Basically, there's a big air gap over the door. Oh. <laughs> that is air leakage. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and it, it's a big old oak door. So uh, I advise them to somehow hang a curtain behind it or get that, get that insulated. Uh, any idea what this is showing us? See here, now we've got, we've got the scale. We've got the temperature scale. You should, uh, 
ideally that should always be shown when we've got when we're showing a thermal imaging this is from the inside isn't it so now the cold spot is where you're losing heat yes a little bit yeah yes so you've got an uninsulated section between your rafters there yes so this is there's a flat ceiling at the top here and then there's a bit of sloping ceiling here this is actually the uh, shop in the wildlife center and you can see that you know generally it's insulated uh, but there are some major gaps uh, there are some major gaps in that and actually I find and again if you look at the if you look at the flat ceiling you can see the rafters really stick out clearly and it's warmer between the rafters which is what we want to see so the flat ceiling seems to be reasonably well insulated this particularly hot spot here is probably there's probably something below I think there's a heater down here and the heater is blowing up and the air is you know that's the hot spot from the from the heater below but it's this cold spot uh, the only explanation for that is that there is uh, an area of missing insulation so one one of the one of the difficult things when you've got sloping ceilings is knowing whether they're insulated or not and i think that's one of the one of the most useful things to use a um, thermal imaging camera for is determining whether sloping ceilings are are insulated yeah. so if the if it's showing up as cold between the rafters then it's there's no insulation if it's showing up as warm then there's a lot of insulation. If it's showing up as fairly even, then they've probably put insulation under the rafters as well. Any idea what that's showing us? So here we've got we've got we've got a sloping roof here that's coming right down. Um, it's a sort of cat slide roof coming down here. There generally it looks reasonably well insulated, but there are some hot spots. Mm -hmm. This, I think, if we <laughs> click on it, oh. the red one, so that, that's where the boiler is. <laughs> yeah. And the boiler yeah. is, is very close to the sloping ceiling. Um, this one here, there is a hot water tank in that area. And that is a flue of some sort. So generally, the roof is reasonably well insulated, but you can really you can really pick up where the um, where where the uh, so a bit of extra insulation over there might might uh, might be very handy and round the round the Velux window. Uh, could I just ask, was that picture taken at night time or is that just how? No, we... that's during the day. Okay, because I, I don't know whether this camera is the same, but. But one thing with a FLIR camera is that there's a visible camera and a infrared camera. Yes. And you can superpose the two images. Yes. Uh, that I think adjustable, adjustable level. So you can see lines on the thermal image that, that, that actually indicate the components of the building. Yes. Yes. Well, you can do that with the fluke as well. I'll be showing okay. you that. Okay. I'll, be, I'll be showing you that shortly when I switch to actually um running the software for you mm. okay uh, now this one isn't so clear any idea what's happening here this is a patch underneath the window uh it it's it's almost certainly timber framed mm. um and uh it is colder in these patches between the frame so my conclusion was that that was an uninsulated timber frame underneath that window. So again, checking checking bits like that to see whether they've been insulated or not, uh, it can be can be very useful. This isn't a piece of modern art. So this is actually a staircase going down. This is this is this bit here is the external wall with the pink blobs. Uh. Um, it's not blood splatter. This isn't um, silent witness. 
Uh, they're actually, it's a plasterboarded, it's a, um, you know, a brick and block construction, but rather than having solid plaster on the inside, it's plasterboarded, mm -hmm. which is a very common way of doing particularly new build now. Um, uh, you get less wet trades, the house dries out quicker and all the rest of it. And these blobs are the blobs of plaster holding the yeah. plasterboard onto yeah. the, uh, onto the block work. Yeah. Um, so that, that can really show that the, just the air gap behind the plasterboard actually uh, gives you, gives you quite a benefit. Um, I did check this wall from the outside as well. And it appeared that the cavity was filled behind that that's this is so this this air gap is providing a additional um thermal resistance whereas the solid bits are are colder so you know you might find that you're getting damp and mold on you know spots on an external wall if you tap it and it's plasterboard it may well be that that's where the that the mold and condensation is occurring where the plasterboard dabs are. So, any idea what this is showing us? Single glazed windows? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what's what what's what you can't see well, it so clearly yeah. on the chimney. Chimney, yeah. There's a bit on the chimney, and there's also this wall here. Uh. Um Basically, uh, this is a south facing wall, and the sun was out for about five yeah. minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's something you really have to be careful of with thermal imaging that the sun, the sun only has to be out for a few minutes, and um, it will raise the um, raise the surface temperature of any. So. Um, if I if I'm doing a survey and I think the sun might come out, then I make sure that I take all the uh, all the all the sort of south and east facing walls first and then uh, and finish off with the north walls because that's not going to be affected so this is nothing to do with heat loss this is this is solar warming mm. um on, you know on on, on what this, about on... reflections mm. but what about what about reflected radiation from a window yeah, Pass. I mean, that, yeah, I mean that the, these 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 are not facing the sun. These are these are showing heat loss through the through but the yes, but the one on the side. The... Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, if it's if you're if you're, it's it, it's interesting if you if you point the camera at a window, and you're standing behind yeah. the camera. Yeah. You will see a heat image of yourself in the window. That's right. I've done, I've done Be, that <laughs> because your heat, your heat is then reflected uh, back at you on the thing. So yes, we have to watch out for reflection as well. Does this mean you can't do a survey on a very sunny day? Basically, yes. Well, yeah. you can't do an external survey. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, basically, it needs to be a reasonably cold day. Um, you need you need a good temperature difference between um, the internal and external temperatures. Um, I always tell people to have the heating on and to turn it up a bit higher than usual. Um, the number of times I've turned up and they haven't done that, or or I've been sent pictures and there's just there's just no heat in this building at all. <laughs> just you know, the whole building just looks cold. And it's to say, well, what's on the heating on? You know, how are we supposed to mention the heat loss? Measure heat loss if the heating isn't on. <laughs> so you're looking, you're looking at, you know, ideally a 10 degree temperature difference between inside and outside. And ideally, you don't want the sun to be out because that if you're taking external, it, it won't affect the internal pictures in the same way. But if you're looking externally, then um, um, it makes it much more difficult. I, I generally I find internal pictures are more useful. They're more likely to show up where um, cold cold spots are mm -hmm. than uh, than I mean obviously sometimes like the one the what the first image we saw with that roof uh, mm -hmm. external one was useful. But actually I find internal much more useful. 
So this is this is our camera. I'm going to just flick through these. Check that the battery level is okay. Uh, open up the lens cap. It doesn't work very well with the lens cap closed for some reason. It does have a focus on it. This here uh, allows you to focus the thing. Um, and that gives you, if it's not focused, then the thermal image and the normal image are, won't be in line. Uh, you press the trigger, that takes an image, and then you can, um, uh, you've got an option to store the image or just press the uh, trigger again and it will disappear. So you've got to remember to store an image if you want to keep it. Uh, you can check on the memory, you can check on the settings for how the, how the images are shown. Um, there's loads of different stuffs in the, in the menu. Um, in the Fusion, there are six choices. We normally have it so that we've got a thermal image within a non-thermal image. That helps you to see where you're, um, where you're actually taking a picture of. And with this camera, we have a choice of either saving it as an IS2 file, um, uh, or I think what's the other option? Uh, it does mention it somewhere, IBM or something. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, we can set the palette, we can set the, the range of the temperatures. Um, with palette, you can get all sorts of different colors. So uh, I quite like this, this sort of standard one. Elect for electrical work, they tend to do different. Uh, yeah, so there's all sorts of settings here. As I say, we'll, we'll speed uh, through that. But you can increase and decrease the span of the temperatures showing. Um, if you have a very narrow band of temperature, then something can look really alarming when actually there's only a half or degree difference between your cold spot and your high spot. Um, you can have these spot temperatures, so you can have a, a, a center temperature, you can have a, a high temperature and a low temperature. You can, of course, do it in centigrade or Fahrenheit, but I would imagine most people would want to work in uh, centigrade these days. Um, you can set the date and the time. You can set the emissivity. Um, generally, for most services, I would leave it at 0.95. But if you are dealing with particularly shiny surfaces, you can alter that. Uh, yeah. So here it gives you a range of range of materials. So. Uh, that would give you a different emissivity level so you can check what's going out there and that would take away the effect of a shiny mm. surface. Uh, background, there is a thing where you can set the background temperature but that's only really needed in the vicinity of very hot or very cold objects. So if you're doing something that was in a freezer room or you were checking electrics in a, in a hot boiler room then you might wanna change the background temperature uh, and then you've got the file format that it that it's stored in. So it's, it's BMP. The advantage of BMP is that it can be viewed on any computer, mm. but it can't then be manipulated. Whereas IS2, you need the smartware software to open the file, but then it can be uh, easily uh, manipulated. So ideally, we want it in IS2. The uh, there is an SD card in the right hand, uh, yeah, which you can take out and place in the card read, download to a computer. Um, so, things to be aware of. Any, 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 any things from that that you've that you've picked up that we need to be aware of when we're taking thermal imaging. Well, obviously the one that you mentioned, which was. Um, you know, surfaces with a much higher emissivity. Yep, shiny surfaces. Yep. Yep. Temperature difference. Temperature difference in what way? 
um, in, ensuring that there's uh, sufficient um, uh, temp temperature difference between uh, in, inside, inside and outside. Yeah. Yeah. Any more? Yes. Sorry, was that Rosa? Yeah, I was saying check that they've got the heating on. Yes. Yep. Yep. I think that goes with the, the temperature difference that we've got. Yep. Any more? Know where the sun has been? Yeah. So reflective surfaces, surfaces warmed by the sun, settings are how you want them. It's worth checking beforehand that you've that the camera is set up properly. Uh, check it's cold enough and the heating is on, the battery is charged up and you've saved the image. So uh, it's very easy to take an image and then forget to save it. And then uh, um, you don't know what to do next. So I'm then gonna move on to uh, open up the software and can show you what we can what we can do with it. Um, yes. So this is the software within the camera itself. No, this is a software that you download to the computer. Okay, because because the contrast of that with the FLIR is, of course, that the, the, the software is there on the smartphone. Right. So uh, you do it all. You do it all on the smartphone, yeah, do you? Yeah. Uh, including and then I'm trying to remember the details, Steve, because you, you've actually used this more than I have. Uh, but but you can either then put the data onto to a SIM card, or you, you can actually email it out. I mean, I, I've then emailed the data, you know, from yes. that smartphone to my laptop. Yes. So you can then you can then share you can share the images you've got. Yeah. Yes. I mean, by various. The idea is we will leave the we will leave the images with the home owner yes okay can, but if you then, if you do if you do borrow this flute camera then the the software is still freely available for it i downloaded it for my newish laptop only yesterday so uh yeah. smart view classic 4.4 4. right okay so that's uh, right now what i'm going to now I've got to find, oh, okay. I can't minimize, so that's it. Oh, right. Oh, oh, why won't it let me do that? Let's, let's put that up there. Uh, okay, let's bear with me. I'm getting there. Okay, so can you now see this? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's a box that says Smart View Unnamed at the top. And um, this, is, this is how it opens, your image opens up initially in Smart View. And basically, you can open up a whole load of images so you could have them all stacked in this screen. And then you, you click on one of these icons here. And why isn't that? Oh. Why is that? Oh. I don't believe it. It doesn't want to play ball. It was working fine earlier. Oh. Um, it won't even let me close it now. Let's let's try um, let's try stop share. Ah, oh. files already open.
Aha, right. I don't know what the issue was there, but uh, so this probably probably appears quite small in your screens. I'm sorry about that. There's nothing I can do to alter that. But this is basically the editing page within the Fluke software. This is another picture of a sloping ceiling. We have a beam across um, across there. Uh, we can see the rafters quite clearly, and we can see it's nice and warm be between the rafters, which is indicating that that sloping ceiling is uh, reasonably well um, insulated. There was one question I had about this, and that is that um, here we have the thermal image within within your normal image. So normally that's enough that you can tell where it is. Uh, if you can't tell where it is, then you can actually blend out the thermal imaging completely, and then you can see where you are. But we can't, there is no thermal imaging around this border. The thermal imaging is only in that middle box. And there's a really intriguing cold spot here <laughs> in this corner. <laughs> And uh, so I'd really like to know what's going on. Why is it so cold in that corner? What's happening? What's happening there? Is there some insulation missing in that spot? That's that's what I um, um, I'm expecting. That actually there's a bit there for some reason that where the insulation was not was not put in. The other thing you can do with this is that. Um, Often the two images are not quite in line. If you look here, you can mm. see that there's a triangle of the uh, of, of the of the bunting doesn't quite line up with the triangle in the in the image below. So we've actually got a thing here where we can shift it up and down and side to side, and that brings it closer into um, and that uh, and that 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 could be very interesting when you're looking at windows because you're thinking. You know, are you looking, is it is it hot on the head of the window or is it actually the bit above the window or, or wherever? So that's that's a really useful thing to do. The other thing we can do is that we can um, alter the, the, the range of temperatures. So here on the side, we can, we can, and you can see that if you have a really narrow range, then actually things can look, what's happened there? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, that's I've taken the bottom one up so far that it's it's not recording any image, and then we bring that down. It looks really quite alarming. But you spread the image. The the wider you give for the um uh, for the range of uh, temperatures that you're showing, then obviously the uh, the less alarming less alarming it looks. We can also choose whether we have the center point showing. So that's the center point is 14.4 degrees. We can choose a center box and that will tell us the maximum minimum within the center box. We can put in the hot spot, which is actually, I think it's the um, it's part of the bunting is particularly warm for some reason. I don't think that's showing us the roof. And then we've got the cold spot. We've got, as I say, we've got this spot up in the corner here that's right down it's 2.6 degrees cooler than, than our spot here um, where, the, where the insulation is. But you can also see if I'm moving the cursor around, it's showing me spot temperatures all over the, oh, bless you. Okay. All, all over the shop. So that's, uh, that's, that's a really useful, uh, really useful thing to have. You can change the emissivity here if you need to, you can change the background temperature. Um, and and all the rest of it so okay. could I ask a question please yes um is there a sort of quantitative number for say the difference between your your in between the rafters um where it's nice and warm and then where you think there's that cold spot would you say if the cold spot is colder than more than so many degrees then you really need to take action is there anything like that there's a sort of a, a delta t that triggers action you know because it, the insulation may be a bit poorer in one space than another and like you say depending on the overall range of temperatures it may look more dramatic or less dramatic but would you say if the if the temperature difference gets as large as a whole degree then 
you know that it's really worth yeah i mean like that. i mean i i would think a couple of degrees is probably is probably fine we've got we've got something of that order here and we we've got my curse my curse is too big that's the uh, um but we've got 13 14 degrees there and uh, yeah we've got a degree or two i think that's fine um obviously it's you know the better is to have a completely uniform temperature oh. across the whole across the whole piece that that tells you that not only has there been insulation put between the rafters but there's probably an insulated plasterboard under the rafters as well um but of course it might just show that there's no there's very little insulation in the rafters so that the 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 timber is not a um um it's not a cold bridge um yeah i mean one of the really difficult things to do from here is to say well you know what what should what should you then do about it um you know particularly when you're dealing with sloping ceilings it's you know it's a it's a it's a tricky job you know it's not a five minute job to do something about um about sloping ceiling um obviously if there's no insulation in there at all then i would recommend that you that you get it insulated um and that is surprisingly common and the number of people i come across who say oh i've done my loft and they say well yeah that's great but what about all this vast expanse of sloping ceiling and they just say oh i haven't thought about that and, you know, you could literally, you know, you've got, you know, half an inch of plaster or plasterboard and then you've got the outside air, basically. Uh, you're, you might as well be living in a tent. Mm. <laughs> um, and I did, I had one client I visited, they just had the whole roof redone, you know, by a roofer from the outside. And the roofer had said, oh, shall we put insulation in for you while we're here? And they said, no, no, don't, we'll get it free on a grant when you're gone. But of course, the grant only covered the actual accessible lofts. And I reckon about 50% of their ceiling was sloping ceiling. So they'd absolutely missed an opportunity. But then when you get to the point of where your ceiling is pretty well insulated, but there is this cold spot here, then, um, then it's tricky to know how much effort to put in to solve that, to solve that cold spot. Well, like um, you say, that, that could then be a spot that gets mould and condensation. It is. If you, right if, my room, obvious, yeah. Obviously, if it's causing mould and condensation, then there's far more incentive to do yeah. something about it to get rid of those, uh, get rid of those cold spots. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I'd also comment that in terms of the impact on the heat loss from the building, it also depends on the, on the extent of the area. And if it's yes. just a small patch, uh, compared with, with the heat loss through the rest of the building, maybe it's not. Yes. You know, it's not yeah. really significant. Yeah. But and the um, says it might be from a, a mold point of view. Yes. And, you know, the thing is that if you, the, the heat loss through this patch here will be the same, you know, if that's, if that, if there is no insulation in there, it's not going to lose more heat because the rest of it is insulated. No. Yeah. Unless it means that you're actually getting higher internal temperatures, in which case you might then lose a bit more heat from it. But um, yeah, it is it is tricky to know how far to go to get those little, you know, those those last bits done. Really, um, obviously, if you're doing a whole house retrofit, then you want to get it done as thoroughly as possible. Um, but most of us are not in that situation, right? Okay, so 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 now now I've got that how I like it. If I want, I can now change. I can now save that as a JPEG, and and then I can send it to other people. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's. Uh, yeah so now i click on that image i can go to export and then i can choose how i export it and where i export it to so i can do it as a bmp file or a um uh, a jpeg file uh, uh, a png file and then i'd say where and then i can send it i can include it in a word report or i can send it to the client as a 
as a, as a JPEG. Um, yeah, and you can, if you've got lots of images, then you can basically export them all. Once, once you're happy with them all, then you can export them all at the same time. So it's a very handy, very handy software to... Uh, Okay, so that's basically my presentation. Do we have any questions? Perhaps I have a comment from my limited experience with playing with the FLIR, and that is that, uh, of course, what it does, and I think your camera is the same, it, it, adjusts the, it adjusts the temperature scale to be able to automatically to show the contrast in the image. Yes. And what that means is if you uh, if you look at a different part of the same building or in the same say front of the building uh, where, where the temperature range is different. Yes. Then then the colors relate to a different temperature, you know, so that there's no absolute relationship between the color and temperature. Um, yes. You which, see, which, which, well, you can see what it is from the you know, from the scale. But it's a frustrating feature for me, um, not to think of a particular a color as relating to a particular temperature. Yes, which is why it's always handy to have the scale next to yeah. it, um, uh, and all the spot figures on there, telling yeah. you what particular temperatures are. The number of times you see in reports, you just see a thermal image. There's actually no scale with it. You oh, don't know yeah. what the temperatures yeah. are. Uh, you don't know how wide the range is. Um, you know, it might look alarming, but actually there's only one or two degrees between the highest and lowest temperature on that image. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 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 something you have to be very careful with. It has to scale this part of the data. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, I suppose I, I would like to ask that when we start um, when we start doing these surveys, well, I haven't started yet this time around. Um, yeah. Are we going to be expected to use these gadgets? No, no. I always, I, I think um, that uh, you know we've always had a problem with the camera about getting it getting it to people. So normally, normally we would say to people that we do the thermal imaging as an additional service if they think from their initial survey that there might be some you know uh, particular interest so you know if they do have a lot of soaping ceilings they've no idea whether it's whether they're insulated or not then um uh then it may well be worth us doing a special visit just to check their soaping ceilings when the weather's cold enough there is there is one other use I've put I've put the thermal camera to recently actually which I'd never done before, which was checking radiator temperatures. Yeah. Um, and uh, I visited a quite a large house in Clun, and they they said, oh, you know this this radiator, but you know in our dining room is always cold, um, and this one out in the hallway is always hot. And so I went around the house and I traced their system for them. And I said, well, this is, this is the first radiator where the water comes having left the boiler. And it goes around the house. You can see how they gradually, each radiator is slightly colder <laughs> until we got to the one in the dining room, which was the coldest of them all. Um, the problem, main problem was that that was the one they were most interested in because that's where they spent most of their time sitting at the dining table. Um, there was a 20 degree temperature difference between the hottest radiator in the hall and um, the one in the um, in the dining room. So in that situation, what you're looking at is um, probably, um, you know, you can balance the system so that, you know, uh, you can actually turn the radiators at the beginning of the system down slightly. Um, all radiators have two valves and one is normally set and the other one is adjustable. But the set one can be altered 
and basically a trained plumber should restrict that so it's restricting the flow through the radiator at all times uh, because the water's hotter at the beginning of the system so it doesn't need so much water through it and then you gradually open the radiators up so that basically what you're allowing for is that when the water gets to the end of the system uh, <coughs> it's still hot um, but that's that's quite a skilled thing to do and it takes time and patience so most plumbers are not interested they don't want to spend hours in your house fiddling with radiators and until they get it right um, the other alternative would, would be to get that dining room uh, radiator plumbed in so that it's replumbed so that it's now at the beginning of your system <laughs> rather, rather than at the end of it which has seemed a slightly drastic thing to do but you know they were wasting so much heat they were keeping the rest of the house hot in a desperate attempt to keep the dining room warm which was just why, why, oh, sorry. why why are systems tend to be set up so that the hallway is the first one in there because we've had that as well but it seems to be quite a common thing that i i don't think there's any particular pattern to it um you know it's normally the, the you know you've got a boiler and the nearest radiator yeah. to the boiler is you know is your first radiator that's connected in um they're not thinking oh you know let's let's do the most important ones uh at the beginning of the system um because obviously you know people's idea of what is the most important radiator might change anyway mm. so you know you could say that well it's important to have you know heat in the core of the house so maybe the hallway one is a is a good one to have hot but uh, if that means you're you know ideally you'd have bedrooms that you that you don't use very often or you don't need as higher temperature would be the end of your system um, but as I say, in this case, it was it was definitely the dining room one that was uh, that was causing the problem. Perhaps if I could add a couple of remarks into this conversation, um, something else you can learn about your radiators, of course, with a thermal camera, is to tell whether there's any air in them. Mm. Yes, because, because you'll see cold spots, mm. and that tells you that the radiators need bleeding. Yes, um, yep. and the other thing with regard to Toloretta's question is that in some cases well, you can plumb the you can plumb the radiators in parallel rather than in series you know, so they're all working independently yes that yes that also deals with these problems yeah yeah, just, yeah. Just the, I mean, the other the other thing you can do is if people have got um hot water pipes um uh, you know in an airing cupboard that are in, uninsulated you can show exactly how hot you know those hot water pipes are um you can you can see drafts often you can see drafts very clearly um i mean you i'm trying trying to think where i've got other other images i'm sure i thought i had another one ready for you um i mean but you have to bear in mind that you will always see um uh, you know, there will always be a cold strip down the corner of a room. If you point a thermal imaging camera into the corner of a room, you will see a cold strip. It's just that's, you know, you always get this uh, effect. I'm trying to see if I can find another. Let's, uh, let's share that one. Oh. Yeah. I mean, that's a fairly common one. You know, here there's a cold, cold corner. Yeah, it is, it is looking cold there, but that is what I would expect. You know, it's not, it doesn't necessarily indicate a problem, but it might be that there is a draft coming through here that, that, that a bit of sealant in there um, could actually help you get away from that. But that sort of cold uh, image out of, let's see if I've got, any others? Well, that's a. Uh, this one here, I think the window frames are. You know, they're they're going to. That's going to be a shiny material, or you know, a, a, there's bound to be a hot spot around the edge of a window frame. That's almost certain. But really interesting up here. 
there's obviously a, a, a wall, an internal wall here, and they've insulated mm -hmm. the loft on either side, but somehow there's a gap and there's, there's, a, there's a good hot spot right along that, that ridge where that, where that wall is. So, have you looked at the windows from the inside um, in such a way that you can identify cold, where cold drafts are coming through the window frames into the room? Yes, you can. You can. Um, yeah, you. If if you go around the edge of a window, you would expect it to be. You would expect the edges to be colder. But if you then come to a patch which is colder than the rest of the edges, then that's almost certain that's where a where, where a draft is is coming through. Have you got any examples or had an experience of of going to a house and then going back after they've done some work to look at the difference? Is that something that's possible to do? Yes. Um, um, I think that would be very good. Uh, we did one um, like, well, the Household Energy Service used to have an office in Bishop's Castle. And we took some thermal imaging at the outside of that property before the walls were insulated. And you could see where the storage heaters were. <laughs> there were great <laughs> red blobs on the wall where, where the storage heaters were. And uh, we actually had the in walls internally insulated and the storage heaters put back on. And then we did a thermal imaging afterwards and those hot spots had disappeared. Um, so that, that could be right. quite a powerful thing to do, yes. I suppose the challenge there is working out how to you'd want to reproduce it so that the day is similar in terms of the temperature difference. Yes. And yes. All, but you can get a yeah. kind of quality. You can take get, you can get, you can get a, a, an idea of, yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the conditions are, are, are never going to be exactly the same, are they? Unless you did it on the same day, you were just talking about putting some sealant or something around a window. Yes. That might be something that that's might possible, be. You could do something it's, quickly. It, yeah. it doesn't sound like that's, fits into the kind of standard way of, of doing this because it's a survey and go away and think about it. Yes. It's not like a do it on the day thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, particularly with using the flute camera with volunteers, often they will take the thermal imaging and then they will send them to me for comment and, 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 and a bit of thought to them, you know, whereas obviously if you're doing yours um, uh, and you can send the images to the, to the homeowner straight away, then that's that's a good thing to be able to do. Yeah. Well, one of the things that we recommend people to do in some cases is to put this reflective material behind their radiators. Yes. Um, has anyone ever you know, tried to see what effect that makes? For example, by, you know, by looking at the wall on the outside, uh, when there isn't any reflective material there, and then looking at the, at the same area of wall after you've put the reflective material behind the radiator, if it's working, that ought to make some difference to the temperature of the wall yes. on the outside. In that, yeah, yeah. That, it would be very interesting, wouldn't it, to have you know a wall with two radiators on it, one of which has had a um, radiator panel fitted and the other one hadn't. I, I've not come across that situation, um, but it will be an interesting one to see. Because it must also depend to some extent on the thermal conductance of the wall and yes. heat um, being conducted away to, to, to the rest of the wall as well. Yes. Not. Yeah. Yeah. As I say, this, it was, it was, very interesting to see the effect of, of a storage heater. And of course, storage heaters, you can't put a reflective a radiator panel no. behind. Um, so, and, and storage heaters are often in houses with solid walls. So, uh, yeah. Okay. okay, any other questions? I trust that was useful. Um, it would, it would be, uh, it would be good sometime um, if I could have a go with your 
with your Fleur kit. Um, yeah. but if, if you want to borrow our Fluke at any time, then uh, then do let us know and we'll we'll find a way of getting it to you. Okay, thanks very much. Most most of the people here are from um, um, Green Valleys, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing was that we were thinking of doing some additional webinars. I don't know if they, you'd find them useful. I know you particularly requested this one. Um, would it be useful to know more about energy performance certificates or heat pumps or any other aspect of um, energy? One thing that I think people find difficult to grasp is is heat pumps yes I think not not necessarily the de you know the details of how they work i'm not talking about the thermodynamics but the fact that you can get more energy out of them than you appear to be putting into them from the power supply um and i i found that's quite hard sometimes to communicate to people especially yes. when you're telling them that the, the energy may be coming the extra energy may be coming from the air outside that is cooler than the inside of the house. But they, yes. you know, they, they, they're used to boilers and heating machines that, that are less yes. than one hundred percent efficient. Yes, yeah. But the, I mean, the thing is, it's it, it's exactly what your fridge does. You know, yeah. your fr your fridge extracts heat from inside the fridge and throws it away outside. Yeah, but, but your fridge, your fridge is already colder than your room. Yeah, but, <laughs> but we don't talk about the efficiency of the fridge in the same way that we talk about yes. the efficiency of a, of a heating device. And yes. this, this business that you, uh, I've got something, you know, with a 300% efficiency that, uh, yes. that uh, people find hard to get their mind around. Yes. Well, it is, you know, it is, it is quite mind blowing, but it is exactly the same thing as what your fridge is doing in that it's, it's moving, it's moving heat from, you know, uh, from a fairly low grade situation and, and basically concentrating that heat into a smaller amount of high grade heat uh, is what it is, what it's doing. And that's, you know, if a fridge, if a fridge stopped working when the inside of the fridge was same temperature as your room, then it wouldn't really be worth having one, would it? But the fact is that you can you can bring that temperature right down, yeah. and that's that's exactly what you're doing with the with the external air. And if yeah. you if you stand near a um, a heat pump when it's in action, yeah. I feel how cold the air is that's blowing off it. <laughs> then uh, then you'll see that is you know it, it has managed to extract heat from from you know air that's not particularly warm in the first place. Ah, you've given me a great idea. In a Sunday when it's 33 degrees, I'm going to go stand in front of my heat pump outside. I, I, <laughs> have, <laughs> I have seen people suggesting that they might turn their heating on exactly to, uh, to get that effect, yes. I, so, heat, uh, I heat my hot water in the afternoon to take advantage of the solar panels. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think, Jeremy, you're still there? Yeah, but he's muted, I think. He's muted. Has he, has he switched himself off or has he actually left the room? Right, well, I'm going to stop the recording there anyway. <laughs>